Hello. Today, I'm unboxing this. Forty amp DC DC battery charger from Renergy. Um, the box is already open and it's a bit ruffled up because it's kind of been rattling around the van for a few months because I haven't had a chance to fit it. So I'm actually installing it today. But before we do, I'm going to do an unbox video and show you exactly what it is, what it does. Go through the instruction manual and just pick out all the bits you need to know. Um, also go on, we'll put a link to this in the description below. Um, that link is an affiliate link to us, so if you do end up purchasing this product or anything else via that link, we do get a small commission, but it's at no cost to you, so that obviously helps us out if you do that. Um, Renegy aren't sponsoring this video, um, this is purely us unboxing really, yeah, we're giving Renegy a good name, all of our electrics in the van, the big components are all Renegy, um, because we're not Renegy products basically, they're very efficient, very good, they're good cost as well, they're, they're sort of mid-range but they've always got sales on, so whenever there's a chance to go on Renegy and have a quick nose for sales, worth doing because there's always sales and deals going on so this was quite a good price uh, we actually got this in black friday deals i think um it was like 40 quid knocked off i think so we got it quite a good deal um but for other deals if you go to our website which i'll put a link below as well we do have offers for energy so it's worth having a quick check through there just to see if there's any offers you've missed or anything um all the up and coming products and stuff like that so anyway enough gobbledygook Let's unbox and have a look. So, like I said before, the vid, I've already opened this and I've got the instruction manual out. I thought I'd give it a bit of a quick read before doing the video, so I kind of know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, let's have a look inside. So, you get a little satisfied customer thing, which is nice. Um, you do get stickers as well, but don't really want energy stickers on everything, so we'll get it out. Get rid of that box. So here she is. So this is Renergy. So it's a DC DC battery charger. Um, they're also known as B to B, so battery to battery. Um, so just a quick overview. This will go between your starter battery and your leisure battery. So it, it sits right in between. So basically, when your starter battery is being charged via the alternator. This will kick in and charge your leisure battery. But when the starter battery is not being charged, so your engine is off, this switch is off, so you're not actually, so there's basically a break, it's like a switch, a sophisticated switch basically. So you're not pulling power from your starter battery. Just go through the manual and see what is what. Now I have already gone through this a bit, so I'm not gonna bore you too much by doing everything. Um, the main thing with the DC, this DCD battery charger is it's compatible with different uh, 12 volt batteries. So AGM, flooded uh, lead acid, you've got gel, sealed lead acid and lithium iron. So it is compatible with all those. Um, it's got overcharge, over temperature and reverse polarity uh, protection in it. And it is a three stage battery charger. So this will get your battery to 100%. Um, if you use a relay, voltage sensing relay, I haven't got one here to show you, but I will put a picture up now, so you'll see what I mean. That won't get your battery to 100% because it's not as efficient as one of these little beauties. Um, so let's start this end. So we have, there's two ventilation fans in there. Um, obviously I don't know how loud they're going to be yet, um, but once installed, we'll check it out and have a look. Um, these are your input terminals, so these will be from your starter battery, so you've got uh, positive and negative in there. And then the other side, there we go, we'll go, see if you can see that a bit better. So starting at this end, we've got a power LED, fault LED, there's some dip switches to change the configuration settings. Um, that's an RJ11 port for temperature sensor. Um, which is sold separately. Then this section here, you've got D+, plus, which is for your ignition. So you need an ignition wire to run this. So this won't work on 
um, like voltage. So the difference in voltage won't kick in. You need actual ignition to trigger it. So we'll go through that more in detail in a bit. Um, there's also an LC, that one is, you can see, LC terminal. Now that's for current limiting. Now I don't know why you'd use that, but it's there. Um, and then there's the outputs here. So you've got positive DC and negative DC outputs to your leisure battery. Now the measurements, they're all in the manual. So they're in the manual here. But what I'll do, I will take a picture of that and I will put it up. A uh, link below is just a... So you can check that out and do all the measurements for you. So there's no point in me measuring it. You can see they give you... It's good detail, so they give you the complete outer edge as well. So you can you know where to put it. Um, but important note on with measurements is you need <clears throat> ventilation because this is going to be, this will get warm and there's obviously ventilation fans. You need access to airflow. So if it's in a box, um, I'll show you here actually, just shows if it's in a box, you need at least two vents. So you've got airflow flowing through it. Uh, we're going to mount ours in the cab. It's going to go behind the driver's seat. We think, well, that's what we planned. So that should be fine in there because there's holes in the cab for ventilation, which is super. Temperature sensor you can use, which is that one there. So you can plug into there. The temperature sensor is only used for, it's not used for lithium batteries. They don't need temperature sensors. So you can use that for other batteries. Do I'll show you these terminals here. So what you can do with these is that bit comes off. So what you need to do is put your cables through there. So slide that on. And then you can get to these bit easier then to take off. So I'll take one of these off and I'll show you what I mean by a lug. So I'll take that off there. And then obviously once when you before you power up, you make sure that this is back on. It's just so you're not because obviously there they're quite exposed. So if the lug moves, it could touch. Whereas with that on, the lug's not going to touch and short anything out. So what I mean by a lug is one of these. Let's just move that a sec so I can show you. So what this is, the cable will go into there. You need a proper crimper to crimp the cable on, and then that goes through there, the right size. So you can see that one is the right size. It's slightly bigger, which is fine, but that's the right size. If you've got one too big, it could become loose and actually move around a lot. So you, you need to make sure that's the right size. So that's good electrical practice, that is. So that these are M6. So that's the 60 mil cable, M6. Now M6 is the size, is the diameter of the hole. So they are M6s. Now I'm not sure if, I haven't actually seen it in the manual, but always check when you're buying stuff like that is the M size of the nut or bolt or whatever you're using, just so you can get your lugs. So that's a bit of a tip for you for that one. So the D plus wire, which is the ignition, as I said before, that one, obviously this won't start unless that has 12 volts to it. So what you can do, you can actually wire a switch and switch it on and off yourself if you wanted. Or what's obviously recommended, and it shows you all in the manual here, is to connect it to the 12 volt from the alternator. Now it needs to be on, it says D plus splice, uh, splice here. So it's to the starter switch cable. So what that means is it's not the ignition. So once your engine starts, the alternator will produce a voltage so what you want is the cable to connect onto that cable. So when the alternator is producing a voltage, it then turns this on. And then obviously when you turn it off, alternator stops, stops producing a voltage, turns that off. Otherwise you'll drain the starter battery. Um, but what you can do is if you want to switch it on and off yourself, you can put it on a switch so you can literally manually operate it on and off. The only issue with that is you've got to remember to turn it off. Um, or you can put it on a switch with the alternator so it's not on all the time if you wanted to. So that's up to you as well. But it won't work without that D plus wire. Now it recommends that the wire is 18 or 16 gauge here. So and if you don't know what the gauges are, um, I'll put a link below to a calculator so you can convert that into millimeters. So, and then the LC, which is that other one there, which so don't really know what, what you'd use. The LC, I'll just show you in the manual, is so it feeds, it drops the volt, drops the ampage to 50%. So it's current limiting. So for example, as is a 40 amp model with the current limit, it drops to 20 amp. 
And then the next one we have the operation. So the power LED, which is this one here. Obviously, if it's off, the power's off. If it's solidly on, it's running normally. Um, that's a fault one. So if that's showing red, it means there's a fault. And then these dip switches here, you can see you've got one to five and on is down. So what that means is, now the dip switches will depend on your battery. So you need to check your battery specification. <coughs> Excuse me. So your dip switches here, you've got switch one, switch two, switch three, switch four, which relates to these ones here. So that depends what you're setting. So if you're setting the absorption charge. Now each battery is different. So you need to check what the battery uh, specif uh, specification is because that then will then, you need to check what the battery specification is because that will mean what the charge voltages are, which is very important because you could basically ruin your battery if you're not charging it correctly. So with lithium, it's saying to put SW5 off, so obviously SW5, sorry, I'm flicking back and forth, is that one there, so that would be up. And then what we've got is SW1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, all this depends on what your charge voltage is, so if you read the top bit here, you can choose between type 1 and type 2 lithium voltages, and now depending on your battery again. So type 1 ranges from 12.6 to 13, and type two ranges from 14 to 14.6, 14 depending on the charging rate of your battery. So we will be going for this one here to get it fully charged. So depending on what you have, so if you want, if you want it set to 14, you need SW5 off, SW4 on, and then SW1 off and SW2 off. So in 14.6, you want SW5 off, and then follow it across SW3 on, SW1 on, and SW2 on to go up to 14.6 volts. So that's very important. Obviously, check your battery. And it goes into more detail on this section here, so it just shows you the battery charge logic, what actually happens for the three-stage so the three stages, you've got bulk, absorption, and float. So it just shows you how the voltage and current changes, depending on how what the charge is. Uh, for more detail on this section here, we've actually got a post on this that I'll link below, blog post that you can read through. And then the last section is just troubleshooting. So if you've ever got any issues, res obviously refer to troubleshooting. And then you've got the technical specs here, which I'll go through now. So Depending which one you've got, whether the 20, the 40, or the 60, you've got different types of specifications. So the good one to note with these ones is the efficiency is 90%. So that means if it's 40 amp, it's going to run at 90% efficient. So obviously 90% of 40 amp. So it won't be exactly 40 amp, it'll be 90% efficient. Um, you've got the measurements, the weight. So that's a good one to note if you're very um, conscious of the weight of your van, which you should be. And also when I was saying about terminal sizes, it does actually tell you here the terminal sizes. There we go, M6. So it has, does specify it at the back there. So that gives you everything you need. And the last thing is just, well, the fixing holes really. There's four, so you've got one in each corner there and it is raised so if you sit this on a flat surface there will be a slight air gap between but I think it's still worth putting maybe like a little wedge or something a spacer in there just to get a bit more airflow so you can dissipate the air a bit better which is good um, and then on the back it just shows you what the unit is which is good and that's pretty much it for that so that's just a little short video of unboxing the Renergy DC DC battery charger. Really. Um, as you can see, it's pretty simple. Kind of just screw it in, connect it up. Job done, really. Um, it can be a bit misleading, though, being that simple because obviously you're running this via an alternator. Now, what you're not usually told with installing these is they have to be careful with an alternator because an alternator, depending on any vehicle it is, will supply so much power. 
So they rated it an ampage, so you'll have like 90 amps, 100 amps, 150 amp alternators. That doesn't necessarily mean when you start the engine, it puts out that amount of ampage. And it's quite hard to find out what ampage you've got really, unless you can get to the alternator and find out. So what I'm getting at is, this is a 40 amp. Now we've been asked like, why don't you just go for the 60 amp? It's not much more extra. Now the reason with the 60 is because it's gonna be trying to pull 60 amps from the alternator to supply 60 amps to our leisure battery. Obviously 40 is gonna try and pull 40 to supply 40. 20 is gonna try and pull 20 to supply 20. So the more ampage you're pulling off that alternator, the faster it's gonna deteriorate and fail basically because it's, it's gonna be used have much more heavy use. So when you start an engine, it's gonna start the alternator, charge your starter battery if it needs charging, run all the electrics in the van. So initially start up, there's gonna be a big surge of power from that alternator. And that's kind of when they get damaged is the, is the surge going through. And when I say damaged, it's, you know, it's over a long period of time, but if you're pulling a lot of power from an alternator over a long, over a period of time it's not going to last as long as one that you're not putting much power from so that's the reason why we've gone for the 40 amp we could go for the 60 amp because we've got a 200 amp hour lithium battery so obviously we could put 100 amps charging ampage into it um, each battery's got different amounts of charging amps so you need to check on what battery you have um, so we're doing 40 which is enough for us we were going to go for 20 um, but we decided 40 in the end. But what we're going to do is, rather than there being a surge from the alternator when we start it up to power this, we're going to put a switch in, so it's like a delay switch. So when you start the engine, the little delay switch was set to maybe 5 minutes, 10 minutes. So that gives the alternator time to charge the starter battery. It gets past that surge of supplying all the electrics in the van and then it will begin to charge this then. So at least then it, the alternator is not getting a massive thump of power coming from it. It's gonna like sort of trickle it more. And the other thing we're gonna do is fit a voltage monitor so we know what voltage is coming through. Because in the summer months when, not now it's winter, so we need this when we're driving to charge the battery. But in the summer, we've got 600 watts of solar, um, whereas this will supply 500 watts um well roughly 500 watts so we'll get more from the solar so we can turn this off we won't need it in the summer it's mainly for winter so we're going to put a switch just to turn it off um so yeah just be careful with your alternators because obviously you don't want them going wrong when you're i don't know in the middle of nowhere do you or you don't want to go wrong anytime especially in the middle of nowhere but that's something you don't really get told with these so they are simple to install but beware of your alternator so that's it then guys, hope all that made sense. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, it means the world to us because it means then we can, you know, we know we're doing the right thing, we know we're helping you guys. Please put us a comment, you know, was the video informative for you? Was there anything else you need to know? I've got the product in my hands so I can hopefully help answer those questions. Um, we're also in frequent contact with Renergy with any issues we have, so obviously we can filter that to you guys if you need the answers. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching and we will see you in the next video.